All right, Tom, the recording has been set up. All right, good. And this live stream. Okay, and like there's, here. there is Linda. All right. Hello, um, Mayor Woodward, how are you? It's fine, thank you. I was wondering because I used the other uh, link and nothing was happening. Can you I, hear me? I didn't hear you. Tom had sent me before. Yeah, I, I apologize. I did one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. I might have sent you a, a different link for, uh, I don't know, a past meeting or who knows. But no problem. Yeah, you're here now. That's, that's what's important. Um, and uh, let me, I guess, thank you for taking the time on a nice evening to, uh, to join us. Um, I spoke with uh, Mayor Woodard on the phone about, you know, Kega Heights and the deer problem that they've had um, and a little bit about your background and what you guys have, have done. Um, you know, we could probably take an hour sharing stories about the deer that we've seen in our front yard, backyard, and this road or that road and everything else. So um, I don't know that we need to do that, but Maybe if you could tell uh, the other members of, of our committee, um, you know, what you, what, well, first your background, I think, because you have, I think, a little bit of expertise in this, uh, in this area. Uh, excuse me. I have a, uh, a master's degree from the, what used to be called the Yale School of Forestry. It's called something else now, um, but uh, with a emphasis in ecology. So um, yeah, I do have um, some interest in um, in deer management uh, intellectually, uh, mm -hmm. and just the fact that um, we have eliminated all the predators, and so it's not un unusual that deer have exploded, um, it, especially in suburban areas uh, where there's an abundance of food. Uh, it's not unusual uh, to have um, triplets um, and you know th that just causes um, the populations to explode. Um, when I became mayor, the thing in, in Cayuga Heights had pretty much calmed down. Uh, my predecessor uh, was the one who bore the brunt of the um, people, not all of whom were residents, um, were very much against culling deer. Um, but uh, she and the board at that time persisted. Uh, they actually were sued uh, and they won in court and they, they tried sterilization. Um, and unfortunately, whatever they were using had a defect to it. And so it wasn't a really fair test for it, but it still, um, we we're very fortunate because we we're right next door to Cornell uh, and they have an excellent um, natural resources uh, department. Uh, and they were doing um, studies also. And they pretty much ascertained that just doing sterilization would not get you where you needed to be. Uh, so uh, she actually, it's a very dense neighborhood. It's a, um, we're basically uh, right next door to Cornell. And so it's totally residential area, um, not a lot of open space. And so um, very difficult to hunt deer uh, traditionally. Uh, the areas around Ithaca are farmland and, and woods and, and, and mountains. And out there, they can, they can actually um, hunt them either with bow and arrow or rifles. Uh, but in, inside the, the village, that would not be possible. Uh, and they de decided that they couldn't really ask uh, for volunteer hunters, which is what Cornell is using and what a lot of the communities around um, the village are using. We instead hired a uh, professional firm called White Buffalo. Um, who is um, now known. 
and goes around uh, Long Island, uh, Baltimore. Um, so they have <clears throat> they have a national reputation. <clears throat> Excuse me, but it's not cheap. Um, but we decided all we would have to do would be to have an injured deer running through the village, and that would be the end of the program. So we decided early on to go with professional hunters, and we've done that um, ever since. Um, we were not, we couldn't do it last year uh, because of COVID. They couldn't the quarantining and everything. And so we um, unfortunately learned just what happens if you take a year off, uh, which is nothing good. I, I kept on getting reports of, I'm seeing deer. They're eating all my my tulips. You know, are you going to do this now? And so it was it was interesting because it was the total opposite of when my predecessor had started the program. I mean, she was she actually couldn't go to the grocery store. She would be just accosted uh, by people who. We're not happy with the situation, uh, and it's it's pretty much um, evolved into people expect there to be a very small number of deer. Uh, we have a little over one and a half square miles of village, and we have approximately nine deer in the village. Hmm. So it's low enough you can count them. And I have nine deer in my backyard currently. Yeah, I can. Believe the mayor Sunquist probably has nineteen in his backyard, <laughs> but um, yeah, what what is the fee for this uh, White Buffalo organization? This last year, we paid them $27,000. Uh, oh. they, they were here for um, three nights. Uh, and I think they got 17 or 18 deer. So it's not cheap. It, it just isn't cheap, but we don't ha we don't have a um, an alternative, mm -hmm. um, and it's effective. Mm -hmm. We've never had they've they've never had a deer run, um, and we we have never had a resident even know doing the, the calling. Mm -hmm. Linda, I'm sorry, some years past, the video is, more, is I mean, freezing. My video is freezing? Yeah, every now and then, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that, you know, it's, it's Zoom, it is what it is, and it's kind of, we've yeah. all gotten used to that. But, um, I, well, I'm floored by the amount because, I mean, right now we are talking about volunteers and a couple of the names you see on the screen, Matt, Timmerman, Matt Larson are, would, would be two of the volunteers um, who have bow hunting expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm wondering, the, the cost seems pretty high to me. Yep, it is. There's no... Versus, you know, 27,000 versus free. Now, there's a, the risk that you mentioned, um, you know, a wounded deer running is something that I think, you know, uh, it's a legitimate concern. We're all worried about that. We also, uh, you'll note that the Tim Jackson that you see on the screen is the uh, city of Jamestown police chief too. So, and uh, he's, you know, has some safety concerns um, regarding this. Uh -huh. um, I'm I'm wondering about the, you know, the this outfit versus volunteers. Uh, can we do it safely with volunteers? Is really my question. And if this organization called the White Buffalo has been able to do it, you know, can we get the same results uh, and do it as safely? That's really our question. And then. I, I did, you know, and maybe you can talk to us a little bit about the, you know, the problem of an overpopulation of deer. I think that's something I, I today I got a very angry email from somebody who sent me the, and I think Brent, you probably got the same one. They sent photos of the bushes and stuff that the deer have eaten. Um, but we do 
from time to time get an email from someone who who says you know don't hunt the deer it's awful you can't kill all the deer and and again and that's not we're, we're not trying to do that you know we're uh, that's not what this is all about um, but you know and if you want again you you can speak to that problem a little bit because I think that's a real issue uh, yeah let me first start out with you know uh, like I said, almost every other municipality in the area does use uh, volunteer hunters. Um, and they have um, varying amounts of success. It really depends on who you have doing the hunting and how dedicated they are. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most hunters are, are, think it's wonderful that they have the ability to go and hunt in a place where they know there's lots of deer and not everybody gets to hunt there. And after they get the second deer and it's minus 10 degrees, do they really want to sit in that deer stand uh, mm -hmm. and get the third, fourth, and fifth deer? Um, maybe yeah. yes, maybe no, <laughs> you know? Right, well, that's and, a good question. Uh, and, and then it also becomes, um, you might, I can give you contact information, um, the village of Trumansburg uh, the village of Lansing, these are all municipalities in the general area. That's what they use, as does Cornell. Um, Cornell actually vets the hunters. I, um, and they have, I don't know whether they have to uh, go through a program or what, but Cornell's got lots of land in the area and um, so, that, so that they use volunteers extensively. Um, And, and this has sort of been the um, uh, experience is that it does work. Uh, it is cost effective, but it doesn't necessarily um, reduce the deer population to, to the point where you're not gonna get complaints from residents who have their vegetation being destroyed. Um, <clears throat> so you know, yeah. it's, it's a trade-off. It's absolutely a trade-off. Mm -hmm. um, and what was you had a second question in there and I forgot what it was <laughs> um well yeah just the the overall problem with an overpopulation of deer so um we were having uh car uh deer accidents um and essentially um we do have a few natural areas and there was no natural regeneration of particularly oaks. Um, I mean, the deer were just eating everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, the primary, I think, uh, driver was the complaints that people couldn't have gardens, um, that they spent a lot of money on plantings, um, pasta, um, daylilies, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they couldn't grow them. Uh, and as a result, and this happened before I became mayor, and I, I really wish they, that they hadn't, um, they allowed people to put up all of these really ugly fences. And mm -hmm. to keep deer out, you need an eight-foot fence. And so mm -hmm. there, this, this was a proliferation. And it was, um, yeah, it, it's effective for the particular person that puts up the fence. And it right. was very ironic because on one hand, these people were saying, oh, you know, these poor deer, we don't want to, we don't want you to kill them. But on the other hand, they were putting up these fences and it's like, well, if everybody puts up a fence, they're going to starve to death. But the logic escaped them. So mm. Um, mm. Um, we actually um, have, I've seen coyotes um, walking down the street. Um, and that was something that I, you know, used to some degree is, you know, if nature will fill a vacuum, if you will not allow us to call the deer, coyotes can't take a, a, a mature deer, but they can definitely take uh, fawns. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we appealed to every logic that we could. Mm -hmm. And now, like I said, uh, people expect us to call the deer. Yeah. So at first people were opposed and now that it's been done, now they, they expect it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are still a few people who complain that they don't see enough deer. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> too bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, 
Uh, is anyone else here uh, tonight? Um, have want to have a ask? Want to ask a question or anything? Jump right in. Um, Mayor, I was curious. Do you know what the, the deer population was before the culling program started? We had 125 deer per square mile. And you're a mile and a half square. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was unsustainable. It's pretty high. Yes. And it took, uh, I think, three years to get it down, and and then you know, down. You have to keep on. You you have to keep. You might be able to skip a year every once in a while, but you couldn't do it on a regular basis. Um, one of the reasons is that uh, the village of Lansing is one of our borders, and, and they called but we have the city of Ithaca and the town of Ithaca and, and the town of Ithaca just started and they use volunteer hunters. I don't know what they got this year, but last year was two years ago was the first year they did it. They got one deer hmm. and you know, so and the city of Ithaca doesn't do it at all. And they have deer walking down the middle of the commons. Um, hmm. Yeah, other priorities. So you know that's mm -hmm. so. So we we kill our own deer, but then we have a lot of migration into the village throughout the year. So by the next year, you know we have to do it all over again. Yeah, because you're surrounded by woods. Yes. Yeah. This is a very heavily wooded area. Mm -hmm. What's the normal season? When do they? You said they did this for just three nights. When, uh, what time of the year? So we used to do it, um, I think in uh, December, January. Uh, and we uh, hunted from uh, tree stands with bait, uh, corn. Um, a couple of years ago, the DEC always had this law in the books, but the lawyers just finally realized it was there they have a rule that you cannot bait within 300 feet of a road. Hmm. Um, if you've got, you know, if you're out in the farmland or in the woods, that's not a problem. Um, we had like 10 and, and we were using uh, crossbows. And of course we had to, to make sure that there were enough um, residents around to for the radius and so we actually had 10 sites within the village uh where we could do it there were there was enough people that said no that it became difficult you know to to do these sites and the last year that we did it that way the deer were getting wary even if the even if the food was there they sort of knew not to go and so mm -hmm. it was getting harder and harder to call them when the DEC said, you know, you can't bait within 300 feet, we lost every bait site but one. And Paul Curtis from uh, Cornell came over and said that they had been given an experimental permit from the DEC that he thought we could get to. And so we applied for it. And what it amounts to is that this is again, white buffalo that's doing it. Um, there is no, we are darting them with a tranquilizer and then they are finishing them off with another drug. Now, the downside to that is as soon as you put anything into the deer, you can't use them for meat. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. donating it to the food banks before that. So that's, you know, unfortunate. That's but major. What, yeah. Mm -hmm. What that allows us to do, there is no radius. There is no projectile involved. There's no crossbow. There's no rifle. What the what white buffalo does is they go out and one of our police go with them uh, because the police are allowed to go on any property in the village. So they dart them, policeman is there, they get the deer and they take them up to our DPW and that's where they, um, they finish them off. Um, and, you know, they just they just drive around and essentially spotlight them, something that you know a regular hunter would never be allowed to do. Um, mm -hmm. And it's quite effective. When they started to do that, um, Tony, who's the head of White Buffalo, decided that the better time to do it was April. Mm. 
when they're hungry. After the fawn? Pardon? After the fawns have been born or? No, before the fawns are born. Uh, the fawns are okay. usually born around May around here. So sometime mm -hmm. in April, um, they're hungry. Uh, the lawns are greening up and the tulips and things are coming out. And so they're moving and they're moving on into the properties. And, um, and so I think they came like mid-April this year. Um, a little later than they would have liked to, but there was still co enough COVID around that they had to be careful because he, he comes and he has a technician um, that administers the drugs. And that's a DEC requirement too. So we've yeah. got a, a very good working relationship with DEC, uh, with uh, Courtney Lemire, who's the um, DEC ranger for our area. She's been very- So uh, if you don't mind me asking, I'm, I'm, and I think Tim can speak on this too. Um, the problem that they had with the deer population in Celeron was taken care of kind of on the hush hush over bait pile. And um, I was just curious to think to, to see what anybody else thought about that. Um, you know, they didn't tell the public about it. They just baited the deer and took them out and it, it really took care of the population. Um, yeah, from a, I, I'm just curious to see what anybody else thought about that. And if it's something that everybody was interested in doing for these, these areas here behind Allen Park and, and behind Bergman Park, things like that. Well, <laughs> Um, I kind of think the ship has sailed. Like I think people that I've talked to on it, anytime I get a complaint, I tell them, you know, that we've got a committee and we're looking into this and we're researching it and we're trying to figure out the best way to do this. And there's support. I'd say 90% of the people I talk to have support for a controlled hunt. Um, you know, even though it's in city owned land and they, they know the areas that we're talking about. Um, and as far as bait versus no bait uh, from uh, some of the hunters have told me that, you know, bait usually works like once and then the deer kind of wise up to it. And, you know, so they really, the bait wasn't the issue. I, from what I think it was uh, Bob uh, Johnson mentioned that once to me. Um, yeah. So, you know. Hey, Tom, did you guys have a chance when you were over here last, uh, the last meeting at Allen Park? You guys mm -hmm. met here, right? Yes. Uh -huh. did, you have a, did you have a chance to walk this property at all? Well, we didn't as a group. I've done it. it okay. You're out there right now. We're pretty yeah, close. I'm stand yeah, I'm standing here right now. Yeah, yeah. And it to me, it looked like you could set up a tree stand. Again, I'm not a hunter, but you could set up a tree stand and... I mean, I had deer kind of just walking past me 20 feet yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, just like, what are you doing over there? Yeah, yeah. And um, and no one's out there. And I, I understand there, there's always, you know, I would, I'd be worried about kids back there, but I just got to believe that people like yourself are not going to take a, a wild shot at a deer with anyone in the area. And, and if anyone in the area the deer are going to, they're going to run, you know, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, well, you're talking about taking a shot that's 20 to 30 yards. If you can't tell everything that's in that area, you don't need to be hunting at all. Right. Right. So well, I, I know personally spending as much time as I've spent down here, you know, you can hand feed these deer in here. Mm -hmm. And what you were saying earlier about people being committed to the cause, I'm willing to dedicate, you know, my, all of my free time during whenever we decided if we were going to try to do this, um, to come out here and manage the wildlife population. I just would like to see it thrive. I would like to see people be able to have their gardens. I would like to see a healthy population of white-tailed deer in this area. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to commit whatever free time I have during any allotted time if we were to be given that to kind of thin out this herd. And 17 deer is not a lot of deer. You know, to spend almost $30,000 seems, seems, I mean, if it worked, it worked. You know, that's one right. thing, but you know, we're willing to pay as hunters for the tags to do this, you know, mm -hmm. in a safe manner and right. but everybody to work for everybody. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think the group that of hunters that I've talked to, you're, you're hunting with there's about 10 or 12 who I think, you know, um, 
like, like you would be dedicated to getting this done. Uh, it, and it might take, you know, I think it's a program that would start, you know, this year, hopefully, and then it might continue the next two, three years. You might have to maybe take a year off. I don't know. Uh, that's something yeah. that remains to be seen. Um, I, you know, the, I, I guess uh, I, I want to ask if anyone else has a question and uh, Chief Jackson, uh, I'm kind of, I know you have concerns about the safety of it. Um, you know, I don't know if you'd like to talk about I, I, Yeah, I have a question for the, uh, the mayor. How close were the hunting areas to residents? So like, by law, we had to be, I think, um, uh, I think it was 250 feet? yards, I think, 150 feet, 50 yards. 150 feet, yeah, 150 foot radius um, around where you were actually hunting. Uh, the homeowners had to agree um, to let us shoot from there. And we, and they used, uh, like I presume you would, tree stands. Um, mm. and so they're shooting down um, and they were doing it at night, right? when probably like from say 10 to two in the, and when they were doing that they were it was in the middle of the winter so the chances of anybody being out and about were pretty minimal right mm -hmm. thank you and so you never had a an occasion where a deer would run into somebody's yard or did you no i mean again we were using professional hunters they they were they didn't take the shot unless they knew it could be a kill uh, mm -hmm. uh, so we, they never had a deer. Yeah. And, and this was all with a bow, right? Yeah, crossbow. Yeah, crossbow, I think you said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we discussed, um, because the radius would be smaller with a regular bow, but white buffalo will, will not do it because even though they're experienced hunters, they don't think that there's still the probability that you wouldn't be able <clears throat> to uh, fell the deer with, with one shot. So... It was crossbows or nothing because regular uh, bow, it was a smaller radius. Um, so, yeah. Um, Matt and Matt, do you guys use crossbows or? I have before. Yeah, I've taken a deer with a crossbow before because I was in a tight confined space, but typically I shoot a, a, a compound bow. But. but if that was something that you guys were interested in doing is using crossbows, that's, you know, we can talk about that. It's, you know, they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty user friendly. They're super simple to use. Mm -hmm. I use Matt, both too, Tom. Okay. I, you know, are you familiar with uh, Bob Johnson and the type of what he uses? Does he use a crossbow or? He couldn't make it tonight, but. He probably uses a recurve. I don't know, I'm just. <laughs> okay, I don't know. I'm. So are, are you're planning on, on hunting like in, in on city land so that you don't have to worry about it, homeowner um, permissions. Right. It would, it's city property. It's park. You know, it's in different parks throughout the, the city. And and it's. I don't believe like uh, Matt, where you're standing right now, you're not. 300 feet from a house, I would guess, right? Well, where, I, where I'm standing right now, I'm about 100 yards. I'm probably about 150 yards from these houses over here. And then when you look towards back towards Manchester, there's several hundred yards there. So, I mean, there's definitely sweet spots in the middle of this property here and all the park properties that we're referring to. Mm -hmm. um, where reality, so, yeah. Well, that's what I would really... It's a lot easier. Try to, yeah, it, you know, tell the hunters, look, this is, if this program is going to work, it's, you've got to be, you know, it's got to be a sure that, a sure that, a surety that you're going to hit this deer. And yeah. if it does run, if it runs 100 yards, 150 yards, it's just going to drop in the woods. It's not going to, we don't want it because, you know, that would hurt the program is to have one go into a street and, or just somebody's backyard. <clears throat> um, yeah. And that, you know, some people might not mind. I, I tell you, the number of calls and emails I get from, from angry people, they probably wouldn't mind a bit. Yeah. 
Um, so the thing is, I, regardless if we were in a committee to take care of the deer population in the city, I always commit myself to the animal when I'm going to take a shot. You know, I'm not going to take a squirrely shot. There's, I'm, I'm just not willing to do it. I'm not willing to injure a deer. It's, it's got to be a sure thing for me. Um, just because I want to procure that meat for myself and I don't want to lose that animal. And it's, I, it's very important to me. It's something I'm passionate about and I have been since I was a little boy. So yeah, I, I would bring that same kind of dedication into taking these deer out of the herd to cull, you know, some of these deer. Um, and I know for just me personally, I could, I mean, I could call in a month, I could probably call 10 deer out of here. So, yeah. and I think that, um, yeah, you might run into a situation where they get a little weary of it, but um, they're going to, you, you know, three, four, five days out of the wood, they're going to start coming back and trying to find those same food, you know, sources. So, mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing is you have to be committed to shooting does. Yes. Yeah. Shooting the bucks doesn't get you anything. I don't have to shoot a single buck out of here. That's, that's all good <sighs> with me. Mm -hmm. okay. I would even go as far as to say we could take, could take fawns too. I know that's another sensitive subject for some people, but you know, when you're talking about the wildlife management, it's, it's kind of what you have to do. I would, I would take fawns and does. I, I wouldn't even need to take a buck out of here. That's not a concern of mine at all. What time of the year are you planning on doing it? Um, it depends on what everybody was comfortable with and could agree on. Yeah. Uh, I think that late season, I think that after all the other hunters are out of the woods and they've all done their share for the surrounding properties where you can hunt, you know, across Manchester over here, or over by Camp Street, you can hunt all that. Um, however, the deer population has moved in here. So I was thinking maybe late December, January, February. That's when you can actually get the permits from, from the DEC. I mean, you have, you have to have special permits to do this. You, you realize that. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, originally we had said November 1st through December 22nd. I mean, and again, that, but I'm willing to do it whenever. I, again, the, the calls I get from people when I tell them that it's probably not going to happen until late November, December, they're like, you mean it can't happen tomorrow? I mean, they could <laughs> have done now. Um, and, and, you know, I've told you guys, I'm, I'm, this is not really about hunting. It's not for me. I don't hunt, but, um, I think I'm just trying to <clears throat> answer some of the complaints that I'm getting. Um, but if, if the best time you think would be December, January, I'd say that's great. Cause that's even better. Cause there's, there's not going to be anyone out in those park areas, you know, at that time of the year. Yeah. Although I think we could put some signage up this uh, kind of warning people that this is going on and I, yeah. I would not do that to be honest. I'm sorry, what Linda? I said I would not do that um, because you are even if most of your residents are happy with the program, you are going to have some very passionate people who oh. are, mm -hmm. who are going to be adamantly opposed to it if mm -hmm. you advertise where and when you're going to do it you are going to run the risk of having people go out and essentially protesting and yeah it's impossible to actually hunt yeah which which is illegal but you know they don't understand that and they don't really care about that when they're passionate about saving the deer mm. right that's right wow um, I thought about but that. yeah i think um i think that it's going to be a long process it's not going to be like you said, what, the, what some folks want is, um, you know, can you go out and kill a hundred of them tomorrow so we can have our flowers for this, you know, this fall bloom or, you know, but it's, mm. it's going to be a, a, a few year process to, to thin the herd out and get it back down to a manageable number where the ecosystem can support that. And you don't have deer coming deep into the city. I mean, I, uh, you know, these deer are so keen on the city property right now that I live on Barker street over here by Allen park. And, I pulled weeds out of my neighbor's weed bed or uh, flower beds the other day, and I put them in a pile out back at her house. 3 p.m. the next day, there was a doe in that pile of weeds eating them. I was like, "This is, this is a big problem." Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how many deer per square mile you have? I don't remember that. I have it written down somewhere, but if somebody else does, I yeah, I don't know. You've done a census of some sort. I don't know, Brent. Have we ever done a census on that? I don't believe 
If we did, it's been- oh, but I asked that question, you know, and who was that one uh, biologist? Um, not, not the guy from the DEC, but the other guy. Oh, yes. Um, he was from some deer population. Right. Yeah. But yeah. He said, you know, if you can see a lot of deer, you know, just going through the neighborhoods, you've got too many. Right. Yeah. So you really don't need to do a survey. Which... No, I, I don't think, no one seems to dispute that there is an overpopulation of deer. I mean, and it's, it's amazing. Like you said, I'm, I've seen them walk across Foot Avenue. I see them walking across Camp Street. And I know you don't know these streets, but these are pretty main <laughs> roads. I believe you. Yeah. You know, the one thing that the people opposed to it will say is that there aren't many, you know, vehicle deer accidents. And, you know, and I got to agree, I don't think there are many um, that are reported. And I think it's because, this, you know, with the speed limit and the city is 30 and, you know, most of the time you can see them and you can kind of slow down. And I think the deer have gotten pretty savvy. Um, they've even learned to press that button at the light, you know, wait for the light to change and then they cross. And uh, but I, I saw one and you guys at Jamestown know I was sitting at the Tim Hortons in the corner of foot and one walked right across the crosswalk walk, like yesterday morning, just <laughs> like, and I think he went right there by Hortons. Huh? On foot right there by Tim Hortons? Yeah, the one on Foot Avenue. I was sitting outside there and it, it walked right across from the other side of Foot Avenue towards Burger King and just kept yeah. I was on Newland the other day, uh, coming home from work late at night and there was five velvet bucks right in that front yard right there, like right, right down from Purcell School. So, I mean, we're talking about oh. Bergman Park here, right there, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about Lyme disease? Lyme what disease? about Lyme disease? Yeah, well, I've had one email on that, a, a lady who has had uh, three um, bouts with that. So, and she's, yeah, and she was very adamant about doing something about this. Um, another concern that was brought up to me was, you know, what if people start putting something out to poison the deer? And that, you know, I don't know if that's something that has been done, but I worry about people kind of taking it you know, measures into their own hands and trying to do something about it. Well, doing that on your own volition is definitely not legal. Um, right. So, well, that's, I'm, that's, and I'm concerned about that. And it, the, the emails that I get and the calls that I get, people are at a kind of a breaking point. They want something done about it. And, yeah. You know, I, I would suggest you, you know, start out with your hunters. Um, you know, if you've got a good, uh, solid group that's dedicated, um, it, it, it could work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I think that we've got some here in this committee that are hunters themselves and they're out there for the safety of everything. And they're not out there to kill some big giant buck. You know, they, right. they want to see these populations down to a, 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 a manageable number for the ecosystem mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. and yeah people want their gardens back <laughs> right. yeah. Well, yeah i'll give you um another example the town of ithaca decided that they wanted to to cull and they asked me to do something similar to what i'm doing right here and they finally had a public hearing on it and i was like you know, our public hearings were just zoos uh, with people calling us, you know, Bambi killers and, you know, mm -hmm. just castigating yep. the people on the board. Um, I went to the one for the town of Ithaca and everybody that got up and spoke was like, it's about time. When are you going to start? It was like, yeah. I think yeah. it sounds to me like your, your populace is at that point and therefore you really won't have a whole lot of blowback. Yeah. Well, I think that one of the biggest things for me that I was concerned about was maybe educating the people who don't understand wildlife management and why we have the numbers of deer that we have today. You know, we wouldn't have them if it weren't for the efforts of hunters and the money that goes towards that every year. We, we would not have populations of elk or, you know, wild turkeys or whitetails. We wouldn't have any of them. Do you have elk where you are? No, we have some in Pennsylvania, um, which is not too far from us, but uh, we don't have a population here. One of Unfortunately, the, 
that's very concerning right now is that um, they're, they just, the, the chronic wasting disease in uh, Pennsylvania has moved very close to the New York border. Yeah. So that's something that you need to be careful about. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you think that would be a, a, something that we should do, though, Linda, is try to try to put out some sort of PSA to educate the public? Or should we just just try to go about this uh, with the support that we already have? That's it's hard for me to say, um, since I don't know Jamestown very well. Um, you know, I think you probably should try educating people. Uh, yeah. Because it's the right thing to do. Um, yeah, and I think that I, I think uh, people here are smart enough. Even the most conservative. I mean, I, I think that once you understand why we do what we do and how it's affected the population and of the wildlife, I think that I think it's really easy to understand, and it's easy for people to say, "Okay, these these guys aren't going out here with a six pack, hanging a gun out the truck, trying to shoot deer mm -hmm. at night with a flashlight," you know? Right. But, but we're we're. we're we're real outdoorsmen, you know, we, we really care about this stuff that's going on. We don't want to just, we're not trying to hang something on the wall. Right. 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 Um, just be a, a little prepared for some blowback that mm -hmm. hopefully you can just ignore. You know, yeah. it's not, we had a problem because we had a very uh, wealthy resident and she was adamant that she didn't want the deer killed. And mm -hmm. it, and it was her money that uh, made it so that they, they sued us. Yeah. Um, That's really then, unfortunate. Yeah. Mm. Once she decided to go on to something else, um, yeah. and then every, it, the whole thing died out. But we made, we were on a PBS special. Um, really? Yes. Yeah. We were the poster <laughs> child for, for this about, no, oh, it's probably like 12 years ago now. Well, it's folks like that woman that I'd like to like have a real conversation with, not in the public eye and not where it's a heated argument. I just want to explain to her that if you don't manage this population, you're going to have overpopulation like we already are beginning to see. You're going to have starvation and disease that becomes really prevalent in this area. And then you're not going to have any deer at all. They don't understand that. I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they don't, don't understand, understand it. it. It's tough. Disney uh, created more mm -hmm. havoc with things like, you know, Bambi. I mean, that's what, that's in people's minds. Um, and it's unfortunate, but um, it, it's, just be, pre be prepared that not everybody's yeah. logical. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, it's I get that. term referred to charismatic megafauna with, you know, Bambi or Simba, if you will. It's like, if you go to some of these places in Africa and they're not going to tell you, hey, don't kill the lions. Like, yeah, please take care of this lion problem that we have because it's killing the people that we love. And that's a little dramatic for the deer population. But, you know, like you said, I think you mentioned Disney right there. You cut out a little bit, but it's definitely something that's occurred. And it's, yeah, I don't know. I just would like to educate the people on why we have what we have and why, why we can enjoy it today. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions or anything else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. So moving forward, yeah. what is the next step that we need to take? How, how, how do we need to go about this to maybe get this into motion so that we can do this this winter and, and give right. it a try and, mm -hmm. and see how safe this is and prove to people that we're not, you know, slaughtering animals out here for the fun of it? You know, mm -hmm. I, I, like what, what has to be done for that to, to go into effect that we can give it a try this year? So if you were in the village of Huga Heights, you'd have to um, have a board meeting and you'd have, a, have to have a resolution that you wanted mm -hmm. to do this. And, that, yeah. and you would put it on the agenda and you would let people show up and ask questions. Um, yeah. You also are gonna have to um, contact the DEC to get essentially a nuisance permit. And they're gonna ask you for a deer management plan. Um, they're getting a lot of pushback uh, by people that don't want to see deer culled. And, yeah. and also just um, from a financial point of view. So, so they want uh, information that A, you know what you're doing, B, that 
you know, it's effective uh, and basically scientific data in order to be able to, to show that, you know, it, it's working. Um, yeah. So we were, I'm on it. yeah, we were very fortunate when the whole thing started and they wanted to do the sterilization. What they did was they, um, they dropped, they had feeding stations and they dropped nets on top of, you know, five or six deer at a time. And yeah. I'd like and, to see that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't around. And oh my God. They tagged, them. they tagged all of them. They, you know, they sterilized them and they tagged them. And because they, they had a number tagged, then Cornell actually came in, uh, some of the graduate students from Natural Resources, and they, they cameraed them. And so because there were so many tagged, there's computer programs that you, you know, algorithms that you can use with the number of, the, of deer that you see and the number of this of that you see that are tagged versus untagged, you can get a pretty good uh, estimate of what the population was. So for a number of years, um, until I think there's one tagged deer left in the village at this point, uh, up until a couple of years ago, you we had Cornell do these camera studies so we could report to the DEC, you know, this is plus or minus so many, this is how many deer we think are in the village now. And, and then next, you know, this is how many we took and therefore that's how much we uh, reduce the population. Yeah. And potential population growth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I will, I'm going to work on that personally then um, just for, so we can have a starting point on what our management program is going to be. Um, mm -hmm. If anybody else has anything to say about that or input, feel free to reach out to me, but I'm just going to, well, I'm going to go ahead and take it upon myself to try to put that together using, um, using other programs that have been successful in the past. I can send you our deer management plan that we, that we um, submitted this year to the DEC. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be great. great. That'd be pretty good. And Matt, I was going to ask you, and maybe we could collaborate on this about doing a, a PSA on this, something yeah. you put in the paper and, you know, Here's why we need to manage deer in the city of Jamestown. Something and um, and uh, maybe it's something that you know we could put out there. And, and I think you know a public hearing would be in order. Um, probably, I, I think I would stay away from July. It's kind of too soon, and we, you know, yeah. a lot of people are on vacation. And but maybe August and and then uh, you know with a potential vote at a September meeting. Yep. Usually, you know, the last Monday of the month, we would, we would vote on this. Um, uh, you know, uh, now Brent and I are the only two on the council. There's nine members of the council. It's, it's hard to read. I think, um, you know, when I've gotten complaints, I've told people, you know, you don't, you don't need to tell me that we need a deer management plan. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to all the council members and let them know, you know, because in some parts of the city, they'll say, oh, I don't hear much about this. There aren't, there, there isn't a deer problem here. And, um, it, it, well, they, that's the same thing as trying to educate people is they don't understand that there is a deer just because it doesn't bother them per se, in a physical sense. We're talking about the numbers that are going to dwindle. If you don't do anything about this, you're going to, you're going to lose a majority of the deer here. It's not going to be next week, but it's going to, it's going to definitely spread disease and cause starvation. Mm -hmm. you know you get a really hard winter which we haven't had in a while you know you yeah yeah a lot of death mm -hmm. yes okay well i guess moving forward out you know i want to talk with other council members and and the mayor and see if that timeline works uh with a you know possible public hearing in august if not maybe a public hearing in september with a vote in october and then start the program in you know well, we'll have to talk about that, you know, whether it's November 1st, yeah. December 1st, or end of December and then into January, and then how long, I, I don't know. Definitely contact uh, the DEC about this too, because right. they'll, mm -hmm. they'll tell you when you can do it. Um, yeah, we have. We're not allowed to do with it. Ryan Rockefeller, he's a wildlife biologist in our region. Okay. Mm -hmm. And please keep me posted. I, I'm very curious as to, you know, your success with this. Uh, and I'm sure if you if it is successful, you will get uh, contacted by other 
communities of a, you know, in a similar situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to see that, uh, the deer management plan that you had though, Linda, if you don't mind emailing over mm -hmm. to anybody from yeah, Tom and he can disseminate it. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I appreciate that big time. Okay. Okay. All right. Anything else? I appreciate your time, uh, Mayor Woodard. I, I, no problem. A big help. And I, again, thanks uh, to uh, everyone else on here tonight. I appreciate your um, contributions to this. And I, I know it looks like a nice night out there, Matt. I, I want to get yeah. myself. I'm trapped in my basement right now and love to get out. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, if there's nothing else, so I guess we'll... Uh, We'll end the meeting then. Okay. Hey, Tom, if you don't mind, um, just, just email that over to me, that deer plan. I would love to take a look at that. And then we can yep. we figure out a time to rendezvous and kind of talk about if you want to do a PSA and, and how yes. you want to the meeting. Yep. So that'd be great. Yeah, I appreciate you guys' time. Yep. Yeah. I'll do it as soon as I get off. Okay. okay. Nice meeting, all of you. All right. Nice meeting. Yep. Good luck. Thank you, man. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Take care, guys. Thanks.